Hello and welcome back to Quilting with Christine. This is Quilting 101 and we are making a four patch quilt. Uh, we are on the very last video. If you recall from last week, I ended up cutting the video short and deciding to make it into two videos. So we're going to be starting rather abruptly from where we left off last week. And I apologize for having to do that, but the video that day's recording was long. It was about four and a half hours of recording and combining that all into one video, even with cutting out a lot of stuff and speeding up a lot of stuff, it still was too long. So if you remember last week, we ended up finishing our binding. We had just sewn the entire binding strips together. We made a 45 degree cut on one end. So in this video, we are going to start off with taking that cut end and we're going to be putting it on our quilt and sewing it on. So we're going to be finishing up the binding in this quilt. Um, again, I apologize for the um, abruptness of ending last week and, and just getting right into it this week. Um, but I think it was better to break up all of that information into two videos. So having said that, here we go. Okay, so I've got my starting point here. I've got my 45 degree cut. The long cut goes, the long part of the cut, it just goes along the bottom. You can see the 45 degree angles up in towards the quilt here. That's good because when you fold this over, as you start to sew, um, you need the, the angle over here. Um, and actually you're gonna start to sew a little bit further down. Give yourself about eight to 10 inches of a tail here. We're gonna need it. Don't start sewing up here. I'm actually gonna change the camera angle to where you're hopefully looking on as I sew the binding on. And then um, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll speed that up, but you'll have that angle as we're sewing this on. I should, talk about a little bit about the binding before we start sewing. Um, there are a couple different ways to bind your quilt. Um, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna try a new to me way. Most times people sew the binding on to the front of the quilt and then once you sew it, you wrap it over to the back and you hand sew it down. Um, I, I will demonstrate how to start how to hand sew it down, but that is not actually how I'm going to sew this quilt. I'm actually going to rip those stitches out when I'm done, but I will demonstrate how you hand sew binding to the back. Most people will, if they want to sew down their binding, they actually sew it to the back and then we'll turn it around and sew the front of the binding down. I have a project bag where I sew bindings down that way and I will show you uh, what it looks like. Let's see if I can get closer. Now, if you can see, you see that when you sew that binding on, you're sewing about an eighth of an inch on the edge of the binding right here, all the way around. And that's what you'll see on the front of your quilt. And it doesn't look awful to have it this way, but on the back of your quilt, you see your sew line right here, all the way around the quilt, the back of it. Most people don't look at the back at all. Um, and they're not going to examine your quilt. So this is a perfectly fine way to bind a quilt. Um, and if there's a tutorial of, of someone doing it this way, I will link it below. Um, that's not how I'm going to do it. I'm actually going to use a tutorial. I believe it's by, I want to say red pepper quilts. Yes. Um, where they, they sew the binding to the front of the quilt. Then they pin it around to the back and from the front, when, when they've got it sewn down, try to see if I can, if I can show you how this is going to work. Okay. So what they do is they sew the binding to the front of the quilt. Then they flip the binding over. They wrap it around the edge to the back and then they'll clip it into place using pins and they're really careful. We're really careful to pin it back 
to where it's nice and flat on the back and it's going over at least just beyond your seam line from the binding when you sewed it to the front. And then what you do is you stitch in the ditch from the front. So your stitching is going to be right in here. So you should barely, barely be able to see it. Your stitching from the front will just catch it on the back. Now, I've never done binding this way, but I'm going to do it for this quilt. Um, I, like I said, I like to hand sew my binding down. Um, I like to spend the evenings do that, doing that. I love hand stitching, hand sewing. Obviously, we're cross stitchers. Um, so it, if you prefer, hand stitch your binding down to the back. It's one of my favorite parts of quilting. But when we're out of time, and folks, I am out of time, um, it comes in handy to use your sewing machine to stitch your binding down. So you can do it either way. Stitch it to the back, fold it to the front, and stitch down on the front, just like you saw the binding on the project bag, or stitch it to the front, fold it over to the back, and either hand sew it down on the back, or um, so stitch it down with the sewing machine from the front. And I'm gonna show you both of those last two ways. Here we go. Hi everyone. Okay, we are going to start sewing the binding onto the quilt. You can see how my angled cut is here on on the binding um, and which dire direction the angle should be going. What we're going to do is we're going to just take our binding, this raw edge even with the raw edge of the quilt, and then we're going to fold the binding in half so two raw edges of the binding are even with the edge of the quilt. Now I don't really use pins or clips here um, when I do this. Uh, you can if you want, but, but I don't. I just hold it down with my fingers. Um, my stitch length is usually about a three for this, and of course I'm using my walking foot. You should use your walking foot for this. And you need to lead, start at about eight to ten inches from the end. Um, you're probably going to find the more we mess with our binding, uh, the more we're going to get little strands and stuff off the, off the edges as they pull loose, and I just trim those up at the end. Now the bulk of my quilt and the binding is just right here in my lap and hanging off on the table. Um, I find that for this as well, it's good to have, just like with our quilt top, it's good to have a nice big table area to hold everything down. And, um, and hold the weight of the quilt for us. Now we're gonna be stitching this with a one quarter inch seam allowance. So as I'm stitching, I'm not gonna be watching the needle. I'm gonna be watching right here on my seam allowance. And I know you can't really see up close. This is about the best view I can get and still be able to sew this sitting at my sewing machine without smacking the camera. And I may even hit the camera on accident and I'm, I apologize if that happens. Um, so um, I'm going to speed up most of this, but I just want to say um, I will stop at the first corner to show you how we miter the corner. Um, and when I start stitching here, I will be back stitching. So I'm going to take a couple stitches, go back a couple stitches, and then I'm going to continue on and I'm going to sew down to the corner. I'm just going to keep everything even here with my fingers. Um, no pushing this through, no pulling it on the other side. Let your walking foot and your feed dogs do the work and um, have fun sewing. Okay, so what I'm doing, remember a while ago I told you I had a quarter inch line to tell me when my um, fabric was a quarter inch away from the needle. I am going to, my head may end up getting in the way of the camera, but I am going to stitch this down to where the end of the quilt is a quarter inch away from the needle, and then we are going to pivot this so that we can sew a 45 degree angle here to miter off the corner. So I'm going to sew down to that point, and I typically tend to move the binding every now and then to make sure. I'm right on that 45 degree line. I'm gonna get my head in the way just a second. <laughs> 
just a little bit more. I put my stitch length down just so I could take a small stitch. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift up the foot and we're going to pivot this to where the corner, and you can't really see it, but the corner of the binding is, we're straight on with it, or the corner of the quilt, we're straight on with it. And I'm gonna pause here and take a picture to insert in the video here. Okay, I hope I was able to get a good enough picture so that you could see what I mean. But the corner and my needle are straight on. So I'm going to, to stitch to the end of the corner, back stitch, and then stitch off that corner. It would help if my foot was down. Okay, so because we've stitched this corner right here, let's see if I can get the light to show that a little better. I know this is really hard to see on navy, um, but I want you to see, here's this, the bottom edge of my quilt. This is the top, and our stitch line runs down, and then off here, off this corner. Hopefully you can see that. What we're gonna do, is you take your binding that's running down this way, you're gonna flip it straight up. So now, so now it's straight up from the edge we're wanting to go down. All right, so then we're gonna take it, we flipped it straight up, and that, that seam that we went off 45 degrees, that helps us keep this nice angle right here. Now we're going to take it and flip it down, and we're going to bring are binding even with this edge. Gonna make sure our raw edge is going down the side here. All these extra threads, they bother me. If they bother you, just trim them off. We're gonna trim later as well. But I usually put a clip right here to make sure that, I'm trying to get this to focus in with the lighting, that everything is folded flat and even up here and it doesn't shift and we're lined up on the side there. Keep this folded flat up here even with your the the binding on the other edge that we just sewed down and now you don't have to worry about our our um, threads starting to sew even because we already sewed in that little scrap of fabric. I'm making sure my raw edges are aligned here and I'm gonna start sewing again. I'm gonna start and back stitch here. And now I'm gonna sew all the way down to the next corner. Um, so I'm gonna speed up the video, but I'll stop again at the next corner and repeat this one more time so um, you can see it again. Okay, so here we come up to the, the quarter inch again. I'm going to be paying attention to where this corner is um, and making sure I stop a quarter inch away from the needle. Then I'm going to be turning, pivoting to where the corner of the quilt is straight on with my needle now. I'm going to drop my foot down and go forward to the corner and then back stitch and then right off. Okay, we're going to clip that off. Now, again, here's our binding going straight down. We're going to flip it. So now it's straight across from this edge. And we're going to fold it down, making sure the fold lines up with this raw edge and the raw edge of the binding matches up with the raw edge of the quilt on this side. So we're going to turn it and we're going to start sewing forward, do a back stitch, 
and now we're going to keep sewing down to the other corner and repeat for the last two corners. So let's get going on this. Okay, so here we are and we have our bindings um, ends here. This one starts right here, which is almost just out of camera frame. We're going to lay this down across and this binding end stops right here and we've got plenty extra. Um, so I am going to cut off. You can see where the end of our 45 degree angle is here. I'm going to cut off just probably two inches past this 45 degree angle maybe three it doesn't matter I just need it to lay flat without running into this part over here I need it to lay flat along the edge so just gonna cut there okay so what I do now I get my quilt edge here as flat as I can and I lay this one down and I pull it a little taut. You can see it pulls up just a bit here. I just pull it just slightly taut to where it just starts to pull that edge. And then I do the same thing with this side, laying it. And I know it's really hard to see because of the lighting. And I apologize for that because it's navy. But I lay this one here on top of this one. And I pull it just slightly, same as the other one. And then I hold everything in place. And I know you can't see the edge, but the 45 degree edge goes right here. Let me see if I can add a little extra light on this. Right here is that 45 degree edge. And it's laid flat out. And so I'm going to draw a line right on the other side of that on this side here. I'm going to draw a line. And these edges are pulled just slightly. So it is it is a bit taut here and you want that, but you don't want it too taut. Just a little bit. I'm gonna make a mark over here with a pencil. I don't know how well you can see this line, but there it is, it's not a perfect line. What I'm gonna do is get my ruler with a 45, with a 45 degree line on it here and I'm going to take and I'm going to put this 45 degree line right on the bottom of this binding which is why you want to have a bit of extra here and you don't want to sew all the way up because you need a little room to lay this flat you're going to put the 45 degree edge right along the bottom of the binding and you're going to take the half inch line here and make it even with your the line you just you just drew now the line you just drew may not be at a perfect 45 degree angle i always line up the 45 degree line on the bottom of the binding and pay attention to the bottom of where the 45 degree line is because sometimes we end up pulling this a little too taut and stretching it out of whack and if you, your drawn line angles off this way, it's okay. Just pay attention to the bottom portion here, making sure everything lines up here and draw another line. There. So now you have two lines. Let's see if I can get this to come in right and focus. It's so hard with the navy fabric. There we go. Uh, this was your first line that you drew. This is the second line you drew with the ruler. And that's a, the line you're going to cut on. You're going to cut all this excess line, uh, excess fabric off on the second line you just drew. My hands are shaky today. I'm so sorry. Okay. So now you should have your two pieces of fabric cut like this. And we're going to <laughs> right sides together. So if you press, you lay them out here, you're going to take them up and put them right sides together. This is so much easier if you have printed fabric. 
and you're going to let off you're going to let these little um little dog ears is what they call them you need those to hang off about a quarter inch on either side uh, you don't want to start sewing just like this here where everything is even at the top it's going to mess you up so you need to bring this side in a quarter inch so this dog ear is hanging off about a quarter inch this one over here is hanging over a quarter inch see if I can get that over the white so you can see um, and we're gonna pin it right in here I usually use two pins Let's see if I can show you those dog ears a little better there you go you can see it's hanging off quarter inch each side okay and make sure that you haven't twisted these that your fabric is right sides together the right side of this fabric is is against the right side of this fabric and now we're going to sew a seam right across here okay so we're getting ready to sew our seam right here to join the beginning and end of the binding always run my scrap fabric through you can bunch up your quilt a bit here so to give yourself a little bit of um, slack in this area so it's easy to run this through okay so now that we've sewn our binding together we have to take this and we've got to trim up our our dog ears here on this side and this side and we need to press this seam open okay so I've got my seam it is pressed open I don't know how well you can see that with this navy um, and when I lay this part of my quilt out flat this lays nice and even with it um there's no huge gaps um and it's there's not a whole lot of slack in here i know it's going to lay and be nice and even from this point where i need to sew to this point there's not going to be any puckers or tucks or anything because i've I, I cut exactly the amount of fabric out that I needed to. So what we're going to do is just sew this binding down right here now. I'm going to start sewing where I left off here at the end. I'm going to make sure that I backstitch here and backstitch where the stitching left off at the beginning. I'm just holding my quilt out, uh, not too taut or anything. If you do find that you've got a little bit of extra quilt than binding, lift up a little bit and it'll cause your feed dogs to pull more fabric through and um, it's just weird how that works but um, it'll take up a little bit extra slack or if you're finding um, you can pull one or the other kind of stretch your binding a little bit don't like pull hard but you can you can ease in any extra either on the binding end or the quilting end quilting side I should say I typically find that I don't have a lot of easing to do with this method of joining my binding together, which is why I like it so much, um, because it's it's really foolproof. I have zero problems getting the right amount of binding at the end, and sometimes you really can can have too much, um, and you, there's too much binding here, and then you gotta rip out your stitches and take a little more down, and if you cut too much off, well you kind of messed up and <laughs> and it makes it difficult but with this method I find that it really works nicely you remember me. all this little uh, thread stuff that was hanging off my bindings um, I will tell you that that happened more because I was really careless with my binding yesterday as I was making it I was just sort of throwing it all around and the more you fuss with your um, raw edges on your fabrics the more this is going to happen so I've got quite a bit of trimming up to do you can do this in one of two ways you can lay your quilt out on your cutting mat and use a ruler and trim everything up um, I don't do that because I find that if my ruler shifts I'm cutting into my quilt I just take scissors and I do what's called giving it a haircut I just take 
the edges and I just go along with my scissors and I just snip off any of the um, raw threads. Okay, here we are. Um, I've got my ironing, uh, my pressing board out. I've got my iron on and it's hot. And this is going to be pretty quick. All we're going to do is we're going to take our, bind our iron and just press our binding out. Just like this. It gives us a nice edge right here on the front to get it all pressed out. And we're looking for any little um, threads that may have snuck through to the front. We're going to pull them out or cut them from the other side. Uh, when you do corners, I have a corner here. All I do is I press this side, then I press the other side out. Then I take this corner and I flip it. And I just make sure that it looks nice right there. And it does. I don't press it because I've already pressed right here and right here. So I've got a nice corner. Um, but I just um, fold it over right now just to make sure everything looks nice there. And then I'm just going to keep pressing. I got some pieces that are on the front side. So I'm going to pull them out on this side and clip them. Okay, so now what we're going to start doing is folding the binding over to the back. We're folding it right over the top of the seam. We didn't press the seam to the side or under. We just pressed the batting to go flat against the seam. And now we're just going to fold the binding over it. And now we're going to start clipping. And I can feel that my binding is a good like, uh, let me get a pin. Okay, we're going to be stitching in the ditch all the way around the front of this quilt here. I'm going to put this pin in right where that needle is going to be going down and sewing a line on the other side. I don't know how well you can see that in here because of this ridiculous navy um, fabric. But you can see that my seam line is going to be at least a quarter inch all the way around. I, I'm not thrilled with that. Um, I probably would have done my binding at probably, um, I don't know, two inches had I known it was going to be that far away from the edge of, of this. Um, if I had more time, I'd change my mind and I would end up hand stitching this down. Um, so I didn't have a seam line up a quarter inch all the way around. Um, this is real life. This is the first time I'm doing this binding method where I use a machine to sew it down. Uh, so that's a, a tidbit of information for you. This is with two and a quarter inches uh, binding. Um, so if you had two and a half inches binding, yours will probably come out just a, a hair further um, on the back. Um, this is this is one of the reasons why I do hand sew down because I don't like to see the seam. But again, this is the back of our quilt, so who cares, right? <laughs> Somebody is sitting here inspecting the back of the, your quilt and saying, hey, your binding looks like you got a quarter inch seam there and it's a little floppy. Um, I would probably just want to throat punch those people because who cares? Um, so I'm still going to machine stitch this. Um, I'm going to be using the the navy thread so i bet the seam doesn't even look as bad um as i think it might um being in that far we're gonna see um and this will be a good way for you to know um if you want to stitch in the ditch down the front of the binding or if you'd rather stitch the binding to the back wrap it around to the front and then machine stitch the front down with a smaller seam allowance. You can see I like, if I'm going to stitch it down from the front, I like an eighth inch or less right in here for my seam allowance um, as far as sewing down the edge of the binding. Um, and you can do that. You can sew your binding to the back, wrap it around to the front, and you'll just know that on the back, if you're matching your thread to the binding and it's different than your backing fabric, you'll have a seam line, but who cares? All right, let's see how we end up with, with this. I'm gonna show you when I clip the binding to the back, 
Um, I'm going to be having the clips facing me on the front, but I'm going to be making sure that it's clipping everything nicely to the back. Now, as far as clipping corners, I tend to have the fabric fold in the opposite direction that it folded on the front. So I could see the fold here is going this way. So when I fold it on the back, I'm going to tuck this side down nice and neat. I'm going to fold the other side over and you should get a nice diagonal seam right here. So hard with this navy fabric. Oh, I cannot apologize enough for that. Uh, y'all it's really awful I'm really sorry but you should have a nice diagonal fold from this corner straight up to the top and it's in the opposite direction of the front um, I don't know why I like to do that I think Krista Watson recommended it and it ends up being a little less bulk here and I liked it so I decided to go with her suggestion so I'm gonna clip that there and then I'm just gonna keep folding and clipping and I'm going to check the back, make sure everything's looking okay on the back as I clip down from the front. You can feel everything. I, I've got a seam here, so it feels a little bulky. Um, so I'm going to make sure everything is lying down nice and flat. And if you don't have clips, use pins. Okay, so my quilt binding is clipped down around to the back all the way around this quilt. Before I start machine quilting, I want to stitch just a tiny bit and show you how I would hand stitch this down um, before we get to that. Just so you know, if, if you'd rather hand stitch rather than use a machine and stitch in the ditch right here, um, you'll have that option. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna get my thread and set up and we're gonna get going on that. Okay, we're gonna get started on um, a quick demonstration on how to hand stitch our binding down. Um, I always use a needle threader. Um, you've, you've seen this in quite a few of my videos. I typically always use a size 10 or 11 milliners needle, uh, which is why I need this. Um, and when you hand stitch binding down, always use a thread that matches your binding as closely as possible. So I'm going to snap that into place. We're going to thread the needle. We're going to make a quilter's knot. So I've got the needle. I'm going to bring the knot to the back of the needle. Hold it in place, wrap it around three or four times. Hold that knot, those right there in between my thumb and forefinger, and pull the needle through. And there we have our knot. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I typically move one of my little pins out of the way, and we're going to put the, the thread in just through the quilt sandwich right here and bring it out. We're going to set that knot right in there. And then I bring the thread right through the very top fold. Let's see where it is. I'm usually not working in this direction. Uh, I want it right to come right out of the top of the fold of the binding. Um, typically I turn that towards me, but it's really hard with the camera and I want you to see. Okay, so our knot is set in the seam and the thread is coming right out of the top fold of this binding right here. I think you can see that. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is put our needle down right in in the back of the quilt right where our needle right where our thread has come out of the binding our needle is going to go down in the quilt right under that spot just slightly tucked under the the binding fold just right in that same area where it comes out 
we're going to slide our needle over no more than quarter of an inch under the back of the quilt in the batting area not through to the front and we're going to pick up just a couple threads right on the fold of the binding right here see if I can get that to focus in kind of better and then we're going to pull it through there and so now we made one stitch but the main part of the stitch is tucked in under the backing fabric so you can't really see it so we're going to do it again I'm going to put my needle down right next to where the, the stitch is coming out. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm going to run it right under the backing about, mine is somewhere in between a quarter inch and an eighth of an inch. Probably, yeah, uh, right in there. And it comes right out the top of, let's see if I can get this to focus. Come on, stay focused. Of the binding right in that fold and pull it through. Um, the point is you're sort of hiding your, your, not sort of, you are hiding your stitches. Um, and so when, you, when you're putting it in and bringing it over, nobody can see that length of stitch there and yet you're making it, you're tacking it down every, um, you're t you end up tacking it down every like one eighth to quarter inch and you can get by with um, a quarter inch in between them I tend to make my stitches a little smaller sometimes if I'm in a hurry they'll be a quarter inch but typically they're around an eighth of an inch and that may be too small for you sometimes nobody has time for that um, and so you can make your stitches a little bigger but I wouldn't go bigger than a quarter of an inch and you can see you just get into a rhythm you just bring that thread right down into the backing, right directly across where it comes out of the binding, slide it over under the backing and have it come right out the top of that binding. And then just keep going. Now, when you want to tie off, don't wait until you've only got a little bit. You need like at least two or three inches of a thread tail. But what I do is when I've made this stitch and I come out, I go and I take a really small stitch right down in the backing come right back out where the stitch is and I let my needle sit in there halfway Then I take this thread and I wrap it around three times pull all of those wrap threads right down at the base push the needle through up a bit with my fingers holding those threads in place pulling the needle all the way through and now I've got a knot here. So sorry about the blurriness you guys. There we go, sort of. You can see the knot is, it's blurry, but there's a knot right on the top of the edge of the binding. I just take my thread. I really wish that could focus better for you guys. Okay, I just take my thread, I poke it down right in the top of that binding where the knot is, and I run my needle just a little ways away, about half inch, and I pull and pop that needle down in there, or needle, pop that knot down in behind the, the binding area, right in there. And then I just clip off the extra. I put my scissors right where it is. I push down just a bit and clip so that any of the tail that um, that may be left, it, it pops itself back in there. And that is how you hand stitch. And you just keep, you just keep going along all like that. I don't do anything special at the corners. I just stitch the corner and then keep stitching the other way. Um, so I hope this was helpful. As far as hand stitching goes, um, I'm going to rip these stitches out because I'm, I'm actually going to machine sew this down.
from the front we're going to be stitching in the ditch right in here hopefully I can get the lighting arranged to where you Original stitching line uh, I can barely see it except for the thread here so that's a good thing I'm gonna pull it through to the back before I get there I just tugged on the bottom thread and it pulled up um, the stitch and so I'm just gonna pull it through just grab that loop and pull through and I'm gonna hold these off to the side um, this I can see where the stitch ends here so I'm going to stitch exactly to where this stitch ends, right here. And I stitched this slow the whole way around, especially on these white blocks, um, because I wanted to make sure the needle went down exactly where I wanted it to. And I'm using these threads here. I pulled them off to the side so that I know when the needle lines up with the top one that's coming off. You'll see when you pull them through, you'll have one lower than the other, um, and I'm I'm going by the top one. And there we go. So I'm going to lift my needle. I'm going to hold these separately. Lift up my foot, pull, leave some thread tails. And now I'm going to show you how we're going to tie off and bury our thread tails on the back. Okay, for this part, I tend to use a needle that has a little bit of a bigger eye here. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up. That eye is bigger because I've got two things of thread to pull through. Uh, so what you do, you've got th both threads pulled through. You're going to tie off and not 
to one side. And by one side, I mean to where the stitch begins. I know it's really hard for you to see. Um, let me knot it off and see if I can give you a close up. Uh, this is what happens when you use the matching color thread to your binding. The point is for it to blend in. Well, it does, doesn't it? Okay, I've knotted this stitch here. I, I brought up this, the um, thread from the front. That's this part of the stitch. And I've knotted it off right over here in between these two stitches. The reason why is I am going to put both of these threads in the eye of the needle. I'm gonna clip them off so they're even first. I know it's blurry right now. Okay, I've got the thread tails um, in the eye of the needle and I know the blurriness is going in and out. I'm going to put the needle down right in this hole here in between those two stitches, right where the knot is. I'm gonna put the needle in there. Okay, you can see the needle is in that hole right there. I'm going to slide the needle into the binding, into the, the um, quilt in there. It's not gone through to the front side. It's just in the binding. And I'm gonna pull it out the other side And I'm gonna pop that needle, or pop that knot down into place. So now the knot is buried right in there in between those two stitches. You can't even see it. And we're gonna cut these thread tails right here. I'm gonna put my scissors right against the binding, pull just a bit, and then clip them off. And then you can't even see where it came out or anything. There's nothing there to see and you can't see the knot either so now we're going to tie off the other thread tail same way make a knot bring the knot over to the side right in between the two stitches i usually knot twice i do not pull hard with cotton thread if you pull too hard it will snap it right off cotton thread is a little bit weaker some than polyester not sometimes, it is weaker than polyester. We're gonna thread the needle. And like I said, I know half of this is blurry for you. I'm really sorry. I'm gonna stick this needle right in the hole where the that stitch began. We're gonna push it right in through the binding and the seam of the quilt, but making sure do not come out, do not come out the front side. We've got it pushed through. I'm gonna pull till the knot pops down in there. And then trim the thread tails. And we are done with this quilt. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I love how this turned out on the front side. Okay, as far as my binding it this way, this was my first time ever sewing the binding to the front, wrapping it around, and then sewing the binding down on the back from the front, stitching in the ditch. And I have to say, I really love how the front turned out. You can't even see those stitches in there at all. It looks fantastic, even on the white blocks. You cannot see it. However, I do not like it from the back side because you can see the seam line goes in and out to the edge. If I didn't get my binding laid perfectly flat in the same place, I don't like that at all. Um, and when I do sew my binding, like down from the front, I like it right up near the edge of this. And I don't have that with this at all. It's like halfway running down the binding. Um, and I'm not a fan of that. Now, when I folded the binding over, I read on the instructions on the website that the edge of the binding should have just covered the original seam line. Well, that is not gonna happen with two and a quarter inch wide binding. 
Um, it, in some places it was an eighth inch. If it had looked like this the whole, the whole way, I'd be incredibly happy. But there, it just, the line looks wobbly and in some places, most places it's much further apart. So I think for me, I would try this method again because one, I was done in, uh, 30 minutes binding this quilt. If I would have hand sewn this down from the back, this whole thing would have taken me somewhere between six to eight hours to hand stitch down. So doing this on the machine is great um, and super fast. So I like it for that. I like it that you can still machine sew it down and yet your binding can be sewn to the front and still make the front look nice and neat and you don't see a stitch line here like when you sew the binding from the back and wrap it around like I know I keep showing my progress project bag but like this you so you don't see a stitch line on your front at all um, so I like this tutorial for that um, but I'm gonna have to practice this and work on it uh, because um, this is this seam this line is just way too far away for me I don't like the way it looks um, my options are going to be to either and I'm going to try it both ways on different quilts and see which one works best with either a 3 8 inch seam allowance on the front. It'll give me just a tiny bit thicker binding on the front and that could work. Um, or I'm just going to use 2 inch binding and um, take out my take out an additional quarter inch and then it should be fine. Uh, but this is the back and this is I've decided this quilt's going to be a car quilt. I think I mentioned that once before. No one's going to critique it. No one's even going to look at the back. And when you look at it from further away, this navy stitching blends in. I'm having to actually shine a light on it because it looks black in the video. But this navy stitching blends in so well that nobody can really even see how bad the the stitching is off. Um, the only thing is, is I noticed in some areas. Let me see if I can find it. The backing got folded here. The backing ended up being folded over. And so now I've got backing fabric that's gonna fray when I wash and it didn't get caught all the way in the seam. Uh, let me show that better. You see what I mean? Uh, the backing is sewn in and it's caught it, but the backing fabric when I folded this over, um, the it caught the backing fabric and made it fold down in with it and so yeah this is going to cause me problems when i wash it um i hate to say this but one of these days i may actually rip out all of the stitching and hand sew it down to the back um just because of things like this um this is not going to be okay in the wash it's going to fray a lot so um my recommendations to you is if you do this on your quilt so down from the front I really like this method other than this part and all it means to me is that I need to adjust my binding width or adjust the seam but my quilt is done I am glad that I was able to do this method to show you how fantastic the binding looks from the front um, if you're in a hurry and you don't want to mess with this method because I do think that it's going to take um, a couple tries getting used to your binding and your machine and and quilting to get this down right but if this looks great to you and you would be happy with it stitch it down from the front otherwise I would say stitch your binding to the back wrap it around to the front and do it sew it the same way except you're sewing just right next to the the binding on the front Okay, I think I am ready to wrap this up. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to lint roller this quilt because the binding and the quilt back, I got threads everywhere. This thing got drug all over the floor while I was moving stuff around. So it definitely needs to have a good um, wipe with the lint roller. And then I'm going to wash and dry it. I'm going to wash it with my Shout Color Catchers and dry it. And I will show you a picture of the finished quilts um here right before i wrap up this video so you should see those pictures shortly
everyone. So we're done. You did it. I am so proud of you. Um, thank you so much for sticking with me while we did this series. Uh, I know there's a lot of information. Um, I know I probably went into way too much detail, but I sort of looked at it as like a, a quilt along with me. Um, so you could see all of the steps I take, how I make these quilts, and you can use these tips or not decide that doesn't work for me and, and do it a different way. Like I've said from the beginning, I am not the best quilt maker out there. This is just how I do things and I wanted to share it with you in what I hoped was a fun way that, that even though there was a lot of information, I hope it didn't seem too overwhelming. Um, I, if it weren't for you guys and doing this video series, I wouldn't even have gotten a quilt done this year, I don't think. So I'm really happy with the quilt being finished. Um, I know I just said that it would end up being washed and you'd see all the pictures and so you probably saw the pictures, but I haven't done that yet. Um, I wanted to wrap up the video before I did that. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for all of your encouragement through this process. Um, life got really busy here for me at the end, which is why there's so much in this last video and I'm sorry I didn't break that up, but it just couldn't be helped. I ran out of time and I'm lucky I got this series finished uh, before my husband and I end up doing a few other things. Um, and so I'm glad I got it done. I'm glad you stuck with me. As always, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below or send me an email that's in the description box and, and you can find me on Instagram and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. Again, Thank you so much for being with me throughout the series. I appreciate the time that you spent with me. Bye.